Thanks, Matthew, for joining me uh, today. And I'm really happy that you uh, can tell us uh, something about the repair activities you organized in Rhino Refugee Camp. Thank you, Julius. I'm so grateful to, to join you today in this call, uh, to have this conversation. Um, well, I work for in the Rhino Camp for Community Creativity for Development, a refugee-led organization that was founded in 2019 uh, with the aim of connecting communities while finding solutions that um, solutions that you know protects the environment from global warming. So uh, we've been doing a couple of things. Uh, one is uh, youth empowerment and uh, and digital skills. And then uh, we also been doing uh, e-waste management uh, related activities, uh, projects, and as well peace building uh, related activities. And, um, and the issue of the e-waste management, we have been focusing more on repair of uh, electronics items in general, but also uh, not only the electronics, um, including the, the non-electronics, that is to say the textile products, uh, electrical items, and as well uh, non-electricals. So those are some of the items. And the most common things in relation to electronics that we repair you know, include the solar lanterns, the radios, uh, mobile phones, um, and in other electronic items, you know, that are more, those are uh, the one most commonly used in the refugee camp. And mainly those items uh, helps the refugees to access information, to connect with their loved ones, to communicate among themselves and as well with people around the world, but also uh, transportation. And that is to say now uh, the mechanical uh, items like the bi the bicycles, the motorbikes, you know, so transportation within the camp and around, and uh, including lighting at night. You know, light is very important okay. at night. Everyone needs light at night in order to to see what's happening. So then, because the nature of the camp was that it used to be a lot of. Uh, as scorpions, you know, around and snakes. So when you move at night, minus light, you find it's not easy. How do you do it? Like, uh, did you organize like repair cafes, or do you have like, uh, did you have like a certain area where people could go and and learn how re how to repair stuff? Yeah. Um. At first, we, you know, we 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 started it doing mobile repair cafe events, and then. Uh, Later on, the demand becomes when we tried the repair cafe events, uh, the demand becomes high. We realized there was a lot of eight broken items in the hands of the community, the refugees, that needed to be taken care of. So we we take on uh, the role of playing uh, or organizing those repair cafe events. And while we were uh, organizing those repair cafe events, the response was huge and the demand, the community kept pushing us to, to do more. Yeah, so we, we held several repair cafe events. And then later on, we established a repair cafe center, which we call it Bright Maker Space. And it was amazing uh, seeing a lot of youths uh, having the, the interest to join those activities. Uh, you two have not touched electronics items before they managed to come. So we held um, our first um, project under uh, Rock Agents was the women inclusion in uh, repair culture. Yeah. So that was meant you know, to, to increase women participation in technology. And the response was so interesting because at yeah. first when we we had uh, a survey, an assessment uh, to see what interests are the women uh, in terms of uh, activities. 
so that are related to repair but more we are going to repair of clothes like the test the, the, the textile showing you know mending those clothes so we had to convince them and also uh, tell them that repair is something which is not hard but something that one can do it yeah, I remember so, in, a, in, a, in a talk you said something like that uh, sometimes women are afraid to touch electronics and that you really try yeah. to, to, to show them that they can do it and then that they be can become repairers and technicians as well. So I think that's exactly. really great, yeah. Yeah, so so we, we, we had them and it, the feedback was amazing and every time we organize the repair cafes, we call on those women to participate and take on uh, the repair we put you you told about uh, told me about uh stuff you learned and that you keep on uh learning more May maybe you could summarize like what what in, in in your point of view are the benefits of your re repair uh activities or a thing you 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 learned uh in in the last years about it well, there there are a lot of benefits you know from the from repair one is that repair serves money yeah it's for the yeah. community you know that's supposed to be used to to buy new things but you can still serve money by fixing your old stuff and can still work again two is that repair you know teaches engineering it helps one to learn and know how uh, a mobile phone is being made uh, like how does it work so and uh, you know things related to every training so i mean repair you know teaches engineering and as well in our context repair as well promotes peace uh, in a way that when people comes together they interact freely and uh, they share knowledge and skills through the repair cafe events so we use it as a tool to promote peace and peaceful coexistence especially in conflict related areas well, that's really inspiring. Thank you. I, I wish you all the best uh, for it. And thanks so much for joining me uh, today for this short uh, video call.